Okay, so here's a girl riding her bicycle, um, and she's going down a hill at a constant speed. So here's the hill, which is at an angle of theta, which is very small, but there it is. Uh, and she's going down the hill, so whatever, bicycle. This is a good drawing of the bicycle here. And she's going at a speed of uh, 4.30 meters per second, so that's her velocity. Uh, let's see, so, um, and she's going at a constant speed, so acceleration is zero. So let's go with, here's X and Y, and what I want to do is draw a free body diagram just to talk about the forces acting on her. So clearly she's going to have weight, as everyone does. Uh, let me just label my FBD, okay, and here's a normal force, and so we have the weight, the normal force, there's no tension because there's no string attached to her. So what's left here is, um, is uh, something that is keeping her from accelerating, right? Because if her acceleration is zero, clearly um, there has to be something acting up this way. And so what it is, we can surmise, is probably some air resistance force. Uh, that's, you know, that's what it would be realistically. So. I'm calling that FA. And so now we have this free body diagram that shows everything going on. Um, so let's see, I'm just going to leave the basic free body diagram in place. The normal force uh, acts up that way, of course. Gravity acts uh, at an angle theta away from the negative y axis. So I'm using the same axes I have drawn up here on the little problem sketch. And there's x and y. So normal force acts in the positive y direction. Gravity acts at an angle theta off of this, okay? And so your your air force acts that way, or air resistance force. Um, velocity acts in the positive x direction. So what I'm going to do is um, basically to find the net power on her, because this is what this is about, obviously. Um, how much power will she provide to the bike's pedals? So power, as you recall, is the rate of work done over time, okay? And since she is uh, a single object, we apply the work kinetic energies theorem and say that the uh, net power on her, okay, net power is equal to the net work done on her over that little stretch of time divided by the time. And since she's a single object, that's her change in kinetic energy. Net work is change in kinetic energy of a single object. And we're saying, of course, that is zero because she's going at a constant speed. So. Uh, that means our net power here is zero. So now, what do we do with that? We break that down into the power exerted by the three different forces. Okay, so uh, the power exerted by the normal force is equal to, and how do we find the power exerted by, by a certain force on an object that's moving at a given velocity? We use the formula that the power due to a certain force is equal to the dot product of that force with the velocity of the object it's acting on. So the power exerted by the normal force is the dot product of the normal force and her velocity. And the directions of those, you'll notice, the normal force acts uh, you know, perpendicular to the ground, where she's moving parallel to the ground. So the power exerted by it is zero. Okay. Um, the power exerted by uh, gravity is going to equal the gravitational force. That's that mg vector that points that way, dot uh, the velocity. Okay, so what that's going to equal is uh, the magnitudes of these two times the cosine of the angle between them. Okay, that's the definition of a dot product. So what that's going to be is mg times her speed times the cosine of this angle here. Okay, because she's going, gravity is acting down, her velocity goes that way. So it's this big angle here that is the angle that goes into the cosine of the dot product. So 90 minus theta. Wow, that's ugly. Okay, that's a little better. So what is the cosine of 90 minus theta? It's the sine of theta. Okay, so that's going to equal, whoops, equals m, ah, this is trying to do a line or something. Okay, mgv sine theta. Okay, so that's our second one. And then our third, uh, that's the force exerted by this, this uh, by, sorry, that's the power exerted by gravity. Okay. And then the last one is the air resistance force. Uh, so power exerted by the air resistance is equal to the air resistance force, okay, dotted with 
uh, the velocity. And we don't know what that air resistance force is, of course, uh, but we can at least say it has a magnitude of this. And if she's going at constant speed, we can surmise reasonably that it's going to be constant. So, I mean, you can imagine that the the wind resistance or the air resistance would get stronger as she goes faster. But if she's at a constant speed, which she is, then it, the air resistance force ought to stay the same. So that's going to be equal to the magnitude of the two times the cosine of the angle between them. Now, the angle between the velocity, which is straight downhill, and the air resistance force, which is straight uphill, is 180 degrees. So that's just going to be a negative Fa times V. Simple enough. All right, so now um, what she wants to do is, uh, well, so now we know that the net power on her is zero, right? And so this here, let me just switch color. Nah, I'll stay with this color. So the net power is equal to the power exerted by the air plus the power exerted by gravity plus the power exerted by the normal force. Normal force power is zero, okay? And so, well, so let me just take this whole equation through. Zero, which is the net power, is equal to the power exerted by the air, which is FAV, or negative FAV, sorry, that's over here, um, plus the power exerted by gravity, plus MGV sine theta, okay, uh, plus zero. And so what that gets, of course, this zero goes away, and these two have to equal zero. And what that gets us to is that the air resistance force has to equal uh, mg sine theta. So what this is telling us is that when she's moving at a constant speed, this air resistance force must have a magnitude equal to the uh, magnitude, or sorry, equal to mg sine theta, which is really the downhill or the, the x component of her weight. Okay, if you had broken this into components, you would see that this is mg cosine theta going down or going in the negative y direction and then mg sine theta going in the, the, the positive x direction. Okay, so what that tells us now, what, what does that do for us? Well, on the way back, she is going to have to uh, provide some extra power through the bike's pedals and we're gonna have an air resistance force on her, of course. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the, uh, this is what happens while she's going um, up the hill now. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw this same axis. And here she is, and she is now going uphill, okay? So in fact, her V for this part is actually the opposite of her V for the, the first part. And so the forces on her, she's gonna have gravity going down again. She's gonna have um, the air resistance force, okay? She's going to have the normal force. And then she's gonna have some force that comes from her pedaling the bike. And the way that's gonna be applied to the bike ultimately is it's gonna be a static friction force, okay? Between the wheels and the ground. When she's pedaling the bike, um, it's that friction that's going to keep get her going uphill and keep her going uphill. So what we can do here is there are a couple ways to do this. One is to say on the way up now, she wants to pedal at a constant speed. So her net power, which is still gonna be zero, okay, is now equal to the uh, power of the air resistance, or the power applied to the air resistance plus the power applied by gravity, um, plus the power applied to the normal force, plus the power applied by static friction. But what this really is, again, is the power she's, she's applying through her pedals, okay? She has to pedal the bike to make this friction actually push her uphill. Uh, that's, that's how it gets applied. And if you're more comfortable thinking of it as just a P applied, then you can do that. But what you can do now is you can say um, this air, air resistance is going to apply a power equal to Fa times V, and it's gonna be negative because always the air resistance is gonna act opposite your velocity, right? So P net, first of all, P net is gonna be equal to zero, okay, because she's going to constant speed. And then PA is gonna be negative FAV like it was before. Now, the deal with gravity is it's the same kind of calculation as the power applied by gravity on the way down. You have the MG going down and the V going this way on the way down. And so the gravity is applying positive power. You can think about that, she's speeding up or gravity is, is trying to speed her up, let's say. Uh, gravity is doing positive work on her. So gravity is applying positive power. Here on the way up, 
she's going up this way, gravity is doing negative work on her. So gravity is going to exert negative mg v sine theta power on her, okay? Which is the negative of the power exerted on her before, okay? So the power exerted by the normal force then is zero, and then the power exerted by static friction is what we have to find because that's the power she's applying. And so what we're gonna get now with this is that um, what this tells us is that since uh, FAV is equal to, let's see, what did we find before? Well, FA equals mg sine theta, which also means that FAV equals mg v sine theta, right? So what this is gonna get us is that zero equals negative two mg v sine theta plus PFS. And so then the power she has to apply, this is the answer, power she has to apply, which gets, uh, you know, applied through static friction between the bike and the ground. So I'm gonna say that equals P app, which equals two mg v sine theta. So the way to think about this, one way to think about this intuitively is on the way downhill, she's not pedaling. There are three forces acting on her. The normal force exerts no power, you know, in either direction, right? On the way down, gravity is exerting positive power and air resistance is exerting negative power, and those balance out. On the way back up, the air resistance exerts the same negative power on her. Gravity exerts the same magnitude of power on her, but now gravity's power is also negative. So where FA, or where the power applied by the air and the power applied by gravity going downhill uh, canceled out before, and they were equal in magnitude in opposite direction, now they're both going the same way. So the power she has to apply is equal to twice um, the power gravity is applying, or twice the negative of the power of gravity is applying. And so what this gives you, um, I'll let you guys figure out the number, it's like 300 something, I think, for these numbers. Um, on an earlier version of this review sheet, I know that I said like 5.3 degrees, but I decided that led to sort of an unrealistically high um, amount of power she had to apply. Although, even so, I don't know if it's unrealistically high, but I thought it was too high. I'm not sure exactly what kind of power someone could apply. Let's see, two times, now I've got it up, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Two times 8.5 times 9.81 times 4.3 meters per second times the sine of 2.3 degrees. Let's just see. Oh, come on. Okay, well, uh, yeah, okay, so I can't, anyway, I'm not getting any uh, any internet on my other computer, but uh, it comes out being like, I don't know, somewhere around like 300 watts or 200 some watts. So you, you'd have to power hard enough to light up like two and a half or maybe 300 watt bulbs, which I think you can do, but it's, it's, it's an exertion. Okay, so anyway, that's, uh, that is problem three.